Hello and welcome to another Official Watchers YouTube video. Today we have one of the older style Rolex Oyster boxes. Uh, the pattern is, I think people call it marble. It's like a kind of marble effect on there. Um, and there's a wooden box inside. I love these. I think they're extremely charming. Um, whenever you see one of these, you think, oh, what could be inside? It's gonna be a lovely old piece. And it's always nice to see old Rolexes in any condition because it's just lovely to see that people are enjoying the older pieces as well as the shiny new popular kids on the block. I love the older Rolexes. Let's have a look, see what's inside. This little green box is so lovely. It's leather and it feels so soft and ah, they're so charming compared to the newer boxes. Wow, look at the wood inside there. It's, it's amazing. You know, the box is actually part of it for me, hugely. Um, and here it is. It's the Rolex Cosmograph Daytona Tropical 6263. Guys, just a quick note to say that my technical team are informing me that 80% of you aren't subscribed. Please do subscribe to the videos. It will make it much easier for me to keep bringing you amazing content. Now, if you guys saw my Goodwood video, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it because I had the 6263 Sigma dial there. Um, this is another beast. The 6263 Tropical is truly a rare and lovely bird. The winter months are upon us. It's cold, it's dark, it's getting dark earlier. So what better to discuss than a glorious vintage 6263. The subdials would have originally been black on this piece, but it's been soaking up the sun for most of its life and turned this beautiful tropical brown. Now, the term tropical is used. I would say it's more of a kind of mocha brown. As a vintage Rolex nerd, I am declaring a perfect patina on this watch. However, I am fully aware that out there, there will be vintage experts far more knowledgeable than I. So do let me know what you guys think of the patina of this particular piece. With the prices soaring way above retail, believe it or not, in its formative years, this was not a popular watch at all. It was not uncommon for the Daytona to sit in windows for weeks and months on end. People weren't really interested in them, which is just crazy if you think about the prices today. These were watches with a clear purpose, whether that was diving, traveling, or simply a really robust piece. In that period, the chronograph was a little bit of an oddball. It hadn't really found its place in purchasers' hearts or collectors' minds. Now, here's one that will make your head spin. Rumor has it that dealers even resorted to giving away 6263 models with their VIP purchasers who were buying full gold pieces. They were actually giving away 6263s. How crazy is that? In 1963, Rolex launched the Cosmograph, a new chronograph model known as the Pre-Daytona. At the end of 1964 and into 65, there came an addition to the dial, Daytona. What happened in between the Cosmograph and the Daytona? The Amiga Speedmaster, which beat the Rolex Cosmograph, as well as some competition from other brands, became qualified by NASA, which closed the moon door on the Cosmograph. Amiga had won the space race fair and square. So, Rolex, although already beginning to involve itself with motor racing, really started to concentrate on the sport. Amusingly, enough for spectators, the rivalry between the brands is still going strong today. Most noticeably, they're bickering over the deep sea. Rolex launched the deep sea in 2008, and it was waterproof to 3,900 meters. 2012, James Cameron takes it down to the bottom of the Mariana Trench, and then 2014, Rolex released the James Cameron, or Deep Blue, to commemorate. And then 2019, Amiga beats Cameron's dive by 12 meters and releases the Ultra Deep, 
which boasts 6,000 meters water resistance. 2022, Rolex released the new deep sea challenge in titanium with a water resistance of 11,000 meters. Your move, Omega. Anyway, we seem to have gone off on a tangent about diving and we want to get back to the Cosmograph. So in 1965, we saw the release of the Cosmograph Daytona. Rolex had shifted its sights from the space race and onto the tracks of Daytona Beach, the Speedway and NASCAR. 1971 saw the introduction of the 6263, which is the reference I have in hand and which was in production until 1987. It's a 37 millimeter stainless steel manual wine Valju chronograph with a screw down crown and pushers. The precursor to this watch was the 6262, which had hand pump pushers and it didn't have a screw down crown. So it only had a water resistance of 50 meters. The 6263 got the upgrade of the screw down pushers and the screw down crown and now has a resistance of 100 meters. If that doesn't give you an idea of how well made Rolex watches are, I don't know what does. Point of note is we don't assume water resistance on vintage watches. We think the safest bet is to not get them wet. This is still from 1975. If it's been pressure tested, then great. But otherwise, it could end in tears with so much of the value being in the dial. The 6263 had a number of dial types, such as the big red, which featured the Daytona print in the bold red letters above the subdial at six, and also the most well-known and extortionate dial variant, the Panda Paul Newman. That configuration has square block markers around the subdials. Newman himself wore a reference 6239 with pump pushers, which sold at auction in 2017 for $17.8 million. But his name is now used to describe the very particular dial design seen in a number of Daytona references. The 6263 we're looking at today features a sunburst silver dial and what would have been black subdials that are now enjoying this tropical fade to chocolate. This particular type of fade is specific to long-term exposure to heat and sunlight combined with a flaw in manufacturing. Interestingly, collectors go crazy for Rolexes that have flaws. Dials in the 50s and 70s used a particular paint that was supposed to be UV resistant. As it turns out, the total opposite was true and UV actually ended up causing this discoloration that is so popular amongst collectors today. Who'd have known? So what happened about all of those change dials is then that meant that there weren't many of the original dial models left because Rolex were changing them every time that they came in for a service. So that's what makes this so special. Okay, so the Daytona wasn't the only model where the heat and sun had changed things. There's also Submariners and Datejusts which started life as blue dials and have turned into stunning violet purple shades. There's Explorers 2s which have switched from from crisp polar to an eggshell cream. And there's GMT root beers, which are exhibiting flashes of red and green. These flawed pieces have become cult-like status symbols within the watch collecting community. The patina on this watch is even amongst the subdials. The Sunray silver dial is otherwise unmarked and pairs beautifully to create a mellow vintage vibe, along with the eggshell tritium loom plots to me, it's a vintage grail piece. There's a lot to be said for modern watches. They're robust, timekeeping is better. They are at professional peak levels. Sometimes you want to enjoy the old world of watchmaking. And that's what we're doing today with the 6263 Tropical. I think that that's part of the allure of vintage pieces. They are representative of a simpler time where people used to actually wear and enjoy their watches rather than storing them away for investment value. Either way, it's hard to believe that this 6263 would once have been given away as a bundled piece and it is now at the pinnacle of watch collecting status. This watch is from 1975 and has a market value of £145,000. Guys, my subscribers, everyone, if you would like to see more vintage pieces like this, please do let me know in the comments so I can gauge as to whether to make more vintage watch videos for you guys out there who love them.